everyone, and welcome to another CTF Ride It video. This is Pwn Horse Track. It was a challenge as part of Pico CTF 2023. And in this challenge, we're going to be doing some heap exploitation. Um, first, we're going to be doing some info leaks, leaking some of the forward pointers for two different bin types. Then we're going to be doing a TCache poisoning attack with a use after free so that we can allocate a chunk uh, on the global offset table. Then we're going to overwrite some entries on the global offset table so that we can eventually call system bin shell. Um, overall, pretty fun challenge. Uh, sadly, I did not get this working on remote. Uh, yeah, I think the remote binary is different than the local one, and some other people in the public Pico CTF uh, Discord were also talking about that. Um, so if you wanted to solve this during the CTF, I think you're going to have to do some fuzzing. Um, while I'm recording this, the CTF is still live, uh, so there's no write-ups, but um, if I see a write-up and I was just doing something wrong, I'll leave a comment, but pretty sure the binary was just different, so you'd have to fuzz the last step, which I wasn't too interested in doing. Um... But otherwise, yeah, let's get started. So it says, uh, the description pretty much tells us it's going to be a heap challenge. Right here it says, hopefully it's a heap of fun. Um, so we know we're doing heap exploitation. The challenge also gives us a binary, a libc, and the ld, uh, which is nice of them. Uh, sadly, no docker file. Docker file would have been great, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, Sweet, so let's jump into a Ubuntu box. Then we'll run the binary, uh, volm. So the way these heap exploitation challenges usually work is we're given a series of options. There's usually one for creating a chunk, deleting a chunk, viewing a chunk, and editing a chunk. And all these heap challenges, they usually have their own unique twist. Um, in this one, uh, the info leak, the view, is actually this race function, and the edit function is actually hidden from us. There's a secret cheat function, uh, which is choice zero, uh, which we won't find out about until we start reversing the binary. Um, but these are the options we're given. We can add a horse. Uh, so we can say add horse at stable zero. We'll give it a length of 16. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, and there we go. Uh, we can also remove the horse. So I'll remove it from zero. Cool. Um, and then we can add another horse to stable zero. Uh, we can also click race. Uh, sadly, we don't have enough horses to race. We need five of them. Um, it's a little bit of a slow process. So I'm going to speed the video up while I add five horses. Okay, now that we have enough horses, we can race them. So when we click race, uh, we can see it has this cute little animation where all the horses are racing, and it's the first one that goes over this finish line. Um, and we can see horse D is winning. And there we go, the winner is DDDDD. So eventually we're going to use this as our info leak, because um, it's leaking the names. Um, but yeah, that's the binary. Uh, so let's take a look in Ghidra. Ghidra. Cool, now that Ghidra's loaded, let's go to functions. Uh, unfortunately, the binary is stripped, so we're not gonna get names, but we can go to entry, and this will be the main function. So let's rename that main. Um, there's a bit of code, maybe 200, 300 lines, so I'm not gonna reverse most of it, um, but I just wanna cover a couple little reversing tricks um, so that if you are reversing a similar binary, hopefully it just speeds the process along. First off, when you're reversing, you pretty much just look for these puts calls. Um, these will pretty much tell you what the function is going to be doing. So we can see here there's a puts one add horse. So we know option one is add horse. And if we go down to case one, so this is if we selected one, um, we know that this is the add horse function. And so pretty much you can just go through here and add all the different functions. This is going to be remove horse. Um, here is some race condition. Eventually we'll find out that this is get winner. Here is is race over. Um, it's going to loop over, move horses, and here must be um, display or print horses. Um, so just using the put conditions, you can kind of figure out what's going on there. Another very useful trick is actually creating new data types. Um, so we can see here it's doing a malloc of OX120. So this is going to be our horses array. So we can just call this horses. And this is the function that initializes horses. So init horses. And if we take a look inside, it's very messy. Um, that's because it's using a structure and just Ghidra wasn't able to figure out what that structure is. But that's okay, we can actually create a structure. So we're gonna go down here to the data type manager. We're gonna click new and we wanna create a structure. So we're gonna create one and we're gonna call it horse. Um, it's gonna have size of 16. You, you, you figure this out from just reversing the binary. Oh, it does this sometimes where I can't type. Um, let's click here, click here, one six, there we go. Um, this will be a pointer. So we're gonna find later, like if you reverse it, if you go to the add horse function, it'll kind of show you what these fields are, you can kind of guess. Um, the first one is a pointer, um, and that is going to be a pointer to another heap chunk which contains the name of the horse. The next chunk is the position chunk, and this is, we'll find out, is a int, it's four bytes. And the last one is also an int, 
and it is the in use. So let's call these in use. This is position, and this is name. Cool, let's save this. And now we can give this the correct type. It's not a long, it is a horse star. And this looks much better. So we can see it's gonna go, let me rename this, horses. We can see it's for the init horse function. It's gonna go through all the horses. It's gonna set its name to null, its position to i, and in use equal to zero. Um, so we're off to a much better start. Uh, let's go back to the main function. So like I said, I'm not gonna cover all of it. Uh, if you're interested, I'm sure this will probably be on the Pico game later, uh, but I wanna cover a couple different bugs. The first bug is in the remove horse function. So if we go here, let's give it the correct type. So it's not passing a long, it's passing a horse star. And these are horses. So the first bug is here. So this is how we do the free. We'll see that eventually it's gonna free the horse's name, um, but it doesn't actually clear that field. We'll see that it says horses in use is equal to zero, um, but that, that's it. Um, it's not deleting the pointer. So it's very possible we would have a use after free and we'll find out later that we do have a use after free. So ideally in this case, it should be horses.name. It'll free it and then it'll set it to null, but because it doesn't and there's later in the code that relies on this variable, uh, like I said, we have that use after free, which will be important for doing tcache poisoning. Um, there's a, two other bugs. There's the cheat function. Um, so this is the cheat function. It doesn't tell us about it. We only get to find out by reversing. Uh, one thing to note about the cheat function is if you call this function, it sets this variable here, this global variable, we'll call it cheat check. And so now cheat check is equal to one. And if we scroll all the way down here, we'll see if cheat check is equal to one, it says you've been caught quitting and it'll actually uh, go to the exit condition. Um, so we can only do this cheating at the very end. So, and I think the program's kind of hinting that by the time you start using this cheat function, you should already have your info leaks. And this is just like the final stage of exploitation. Um, but in the cheat function, this is where we actually get to exploit that use after free. So again, let's change the type. It's not a long, it's a horse star. And this is uh, horses. Um, cool. So here, there's this function. Uh, this is the change horse name function. Change horse name. And the change horse name is going to take in that name uh, malloc chunk and a size. And so this is our use after free. This code isn't checking to see if the horse is in use. So it's our use after free, but this change horse function, it's used in two different places. It's also vulnerable to something. So to get our info leaks um, during that race, uh, the very end, uh, it was showing all the names of the horses. Um, it's possible to trick it so that we can see uninitialized memory. And so the trick we want to employ is we want to trick this change horse function so that it doesn't actually overwrite the buffer and we can see what was previously in those heap chunks. Specifically, we're gonna create some heap chunks, delete those heap chunks so that they're gonna have those forward and backward pointers, which will be our info leaks. So we need to trick this change horse function so it doesn't actually overwrite those pointers. And the way to do that, the vulnerability in this function is you can pause the video if you wanna to try to figure it out, but um, they do some weird casting right here. So it's gonna read character by character. Uh, it's gonna do get character, which is gonna return, you know, a value from zero to 256 or something like that. Normally it'd be, you know, like standard ASCII, so less than 127. Um, but then it takes this, which is an integer, and it casts it to a character, which is unsigned. And if it's equal to minus one, it'll break. So cool, so we're going to pass uh, a slash XFF, which is, you know, 255 in hex. It's gonna be converted to a care star. So it'll be 255 here. When it can, gets converted to an assigned character here, its value will be minus one. And so we'll be able to break. And so because of that, um, we won't actually overwrite the entire name buffer like we're supposed to, and we'll get that uninitialized data, which in our case will be those malloc uh, forward and backward pointers, which is what we need for an info leak. Um, and pretty much that's all the bugs we need. Um, we probably should have checked checksec at the start. Um, we can do that now. Uh, let me actually clear and move it up. Um, if we look at checksec, there's no pi, so we don't need an info leak for the main elf. Um, we'll be able to know the addresses of the global offset table. Um, canary is found, so we're not going to be overwriting anything on the stack unless we had a canary leak. An X is enabled, no shellcode, and partial row row is nice, so that means we can just overwrite entries in the global offset table. And since there's no pi, um, we know what those addresses are. Um, and with that, I think we have all the gadgets we need to do the exploitation. Um, cool, so let's whiteboard our game plan and then we'll look at the solve script. So full screen. So there were a couple different steps. Uh, the first is we need that info leak. Info leak, and we need two info leaks. So let's draw out process space. 
So up here, 0x4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 0x7, uh, f, 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 blah, 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 blah. So here is the top of process space, and here's the bottom. So at the top, we're going to have our vulnerable function. We'll just call this a vulm. This is the text segment, so this is readable and executable. Uh, afterwards, we're going to have the data section, which will have the global offset table, which we'll be using later. At the very bottom, we have the stack. Somewhere in here, we're going to have our libraries. So this will be libc and others. And somewhere around here, it's kind of floating, um, we'll have the heap. Cool. So our first step in any of these exploitation challenges is getting our info leaks. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to be abusing uh, the forward and backward pointers of the heap and being able to use uninitialized memory. Cool. So what we're going to do is let's uh, look at the heap. Uh, so drawing this out. One, two, three. We'll just use four heap chunks. So each heap chunk, um, it has a size pointer here. Size, 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 size. Cool. And when you create a chunk, normally what happens is that uh, we're going to be storing the name in these. And so our horse, first horse name was A, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then our second one was B, 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 blah, 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 and C, C, C. If we free the chunk, it actually uses the chunk contents um, for forward and backward pointers. So instead of having A's, we would have forward and back pointers. And this is useful because um, this forward pointer, depending on the order of how we free chunks, uh, it'll point to the next free heap chunk. So somewhere in libc, there's going to be the arena. Um, we'll just say arena. And this is where like the heap stores its like metadata. It's going to have the, the tcache bin list, and it's going to point to the first free entry. And so that might be this entry. The first tcache entry, then if it has, if there's more in the chain, it's going to point to the next forward or free entry. And this one will point to the next free entry, assuming we freed all these. And so uh, it's going to have all these internal pointers. And so that trick we're going to employ is when we create a new horse, we're not we're going to try our hardest not to overwrite this forward pointer, because then when we print it, we'll be able to leak it. These forward pointers, they only point within the heap. Um, and we need a libc leak. Uh, thankfully, there's a trick. If you saw my other heap video, we employed this trick too. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a one of these chunks on the unsorted bin list. And to do that, um, what we need to do is create a slightly larger chunk. And we need to, I think we also need to make sure the tcache is full. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, basically, I just freed a whole bunch, and I saw one was on the unsorted bin, and I was like, good enough. Uh, there might be other conditions, but Usually. for this, uh, I just freed the chunks uh, backwards. And what happens is I think the chunks uh, kind of coalesce together. Um, they'll join up. And so we'll get a larger chunk. And when this chunk goes on the unsorted bin list, instead of the forward and backward pointers, will actually point, uh, these are the forward and backward pointers, that they'll actually point to uh, the arena within libc. So these forward and backward pointers, since they're on the tcache bin, they will point uh, to addresses within the heap. So we'll have this info leak. When we put one on the unsorted bin, it'll actually point to the arena, which is somewhere in libc. So when we print both of these out, we'll have a heap leak and a libc leak. So then we'll call race. When we do race, it'll show like <laughs> these hex, weird hex values uh, racing across our screen. And uh, those are our info leaks. The next thing we need to do uh, once we have our info leaks is we're going to do some tcache poisoning. Cool. So I guess we still have that arena. So when we free a bunch of chunks, like I said, there's that arena, which is in libc, and it points to the first tcache entry for a particular size. And then we have that linked list, or sorry, the singly linked list that points forward to all the different entries. Cool. When we do a tcache poisoning attack, what we're trying to do is forge a new chunk uh, at an arbitrary location. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modifying the forward pointer so that it points somewhere else, so that when we call malloc, we'll create a chunk in a completely different region. So right now all the chunks are obviously you know here in the heap, but we want to create a chunk that's actually in the global offset table. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this value right here. And instead of pointing here, we want it to point to the global offset table. Since we have that use after free in the cheat function, uh, we can change this value. Uh, since we're using a new version of uh, glibc, 
Uh, it doesn't actually directly point here. It's actually XORed. This is like one of the heat protections that was implemented. So the value of forward pointer is actually, its forward pointer is equal to the, I guess, the real forward pointer XORed with the base of the heap shifted down by 12 bits. Um, so that's why we needed that heap leak was so that we could calculate this. Uh, I forget, there's a name for this. Um, okay. Cool, yeah, it's called safe linking. Um, so that way, to, if you want to do one of these tcache poisonings, you also have to have the heap, which is just an extra step for exploitation, just makes it that much harder. Um, cool, so what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite this value so that instead it points to the global offset table. Um, so we'll delete this. Instead, this is going to point right here. And so that way, when we ask uh, the heap for a chunk, first it's going to return this chunk. So we'll get this back. It's no longer in use. Now the arena, the first entry, is going to point here. And when we ask for a second chunk, this will be our chunk right here. And we can assign any name we want to that chunk because you know it's just a horse name. And so when we assign a name, we're actually overwriting values on the global offset table. Um, um, if you remember the global offset table, so that is just a a lookup table of where functions exist within memory. So we're going to have free, we're going to have exit, we're going to have puts. All of these are going to contain an address to libc. You know, 7f something something, ox 7f something something something, ox 7f something something something. So that when the vulnerable binary wants to call free, um, it'll look up at this table and then it'll jump to that function within libc. Uh, but it also makes it a very ripe exploitation target because now we can insert values into it uh, that don't necessarily do what the program's thinking. So specifically, we're going to overwrite free. So right now, free is obviously pointing to the libc function for free, you know, somewhere in here. But we're going to do, instead, is since we have that libc leak, we know what the address of system is. So we're going to overwrite this entry. We're going to say, nah, don't actually free. I want you to jump to system. And so free, when you call free, you're going to pass it a pointer in RDI, and that's the chunk to free. When you call a system, you're also passing a pointer, but instead it's a pointer to a string of the program you're going to execute. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a horse with a horse name of bin shell, and when we call free on that horse, um, instead of calling free on it, it's going to call system on our horse named bin shell. Uh, from there, we, we'll have shell. So um, let's actually look at the solve script. All right, and here is the solve script. So we're going to import pwn. We're going to disable warnings. I shouldn't, but I do. Uh, we're going to load in the elf. We're going to grab libc. We're going to start the process. We're going to set some context. I use tmux, so it does some window splitting. Here are the different functions for the options. So there's one for add horse. There was one for remove horse. Um, this is our function for info leaks. Uh, I'll talk about this one a little bit later. Um, and then here is our function for cheating. Um, and th those are just utility functions that make the exploit a little bit cleaner to understand. So like I said, the first step is we're going to create a bunch of chunks. Oop, keep sharing. Uh, we're going to create a bunch of chunks that uh, are created and then freed so that they have the pointers that point up and down so that we can then view that un uninitialized memory later. Um, so let's put a gdb attach, sorry, pwn.gdb.attach here. So we're going to create 12 chunks and then remove 12 chunks. And if we do everything correctly, there should be uh, some tcash uh, bins, uh, some entries in the tcash bin, and we need at least one entry in the unsorted bin. All right, we'll run python3 solve. Let's do viz heap. Cool, so we can see we have heap entries. Let's look at the bins. And perfect. So we have the tcash bin of this size, and it is currently, it looks like the tcash bin is full. It's just pointing chunk by chunk by chunk. So if we were to examine the contents of one of these, so let's copy, examine, I don't know, 10 hex at this. Um, we can see it has a forward pointer, and it's pointing to somewhere in the heap. So we see its heap starts with 985, and this also starts with 985. So cool. If we were to leak this, um, we would probably have a heap, uh, heap leak, uh, which is step one. We also have this unsorted bin. Uh, this is a very juicy one. And so what this is giving us, uh, let me copy it out. Uh, let's look at 20 hex right here. Uh, this is a libc leak. So its forward pointer is pointing to libc, uh, which is great. Um, and so if we were to print out this horse name, uh, we would get this value, which is our libc leak. So doing this, uh, we have both of our leaks that we need. And I'll show what the, the leaks actually look like in a second. Um, cool. So we have that. Uh, what's next? Um, at this point, we're going to then create those horses. When we create the horses, we're going to say their name is equal to the byte ff. And so if you remember, uh, what's going to happen is eventually it's calling uh, get care. And it's doing a is equal to get care, and then 
Uh, it was casting that to a, a car. A. So what's happening is get care I think is returning an integer uh, to a. So it's you know four bytes. When it gets down converted to a care a, uh, it's going from value 255 uh, to minus one because car is signed. And when we get that signed thing, it's going to stop accepting new input for the horse's name. And so we're going to be able to read that. The horse's name will be that uninitialized data, which is exactly what we want. And then from there, we're going to say, hey, let's race. And we're going to read out those horse names because they should be the leaks we need. Um, so maybe if we uh, do choice three, maybe we'll do a P interactive here. And we should be able to see the horses. And you can see the horses are have very funky names, but uh, these are all of our info leaks, just kind of zooming across the screen. So we see this one that starts with a 7F. So here's our libc leak. And I think uh, we'll probably be using maybe this one as our heap leak. Um, cool. So the, the race info heap leak code, basically it's just going to parse these out. Basically I just look for this one of these chunks um, and I parse these out and uh, I just have it so I know this one is, I look for the largest one, I know that's the libc leak, and then I look for one smaller, and I know that's the heap leak. I actually grabbed this one out, I think, and then I just shift it left by 12 bytes. Um, if you play with it, you'll you'll see what the leaks look like, and you just do a VM map, and it, it all works out. Um, like I said, yeah, I just know which ones to grab, uh, and then I grab those. Um, but at that point, we have our two leaks. So now we can start doing the um, tcache poisoning, and so that we can create a chunk on the global offset table. Um, cool. So at this point, we're going to start doing tcache poisoning. So we're going to remove a horse, two horses, uh, horse one and horse zero. And then we're going to use that cheat function to sh point the forward pointer to a new location. Um, like I said, they're using, was it called smart, smart pointers? Um, smart linking. So the new forward pointer doesn't exactly point to where we want to go. We also have to XOR it with the heap base uh, shifted right by 12 bits. Um, they also have to be byte aligned. I think it has to end in, uh, you know, zero. The very last byte needs to be zero. Um, I want to overwrite free, uh, but I need to shift it. Free is at a, a weird offset. Uh, let's say uh, if we do GDB uh, volume, we'll do run global offset table. If we look at the global offset table entry for free, uh, we want to overwrite these, uh, but this one ends in an eight. So I'm just going to jump one above because I think it needs to end in zero. Otherwise, malloc gets mad. So uh, we go back. Uh, then, cool, we call the cheat function, um, we give it our new forward pointer, which is pointing to malloc, and so then the next to, the, the second to next, not the next pointer, but the, the second to next pointer that we malloc will actually be pointing to the global offset table. Um, cool. So all that's left at that point is we're going to create a new horse, um, that'll free that first, first chunk. Um, and we're just going to call that horse bin shell. Um, we don't have to do it here. We could do it later, but we're going to create a new horse called bin shell. And then we're going to create a, another horse and we're going to give it a name of OX dead beef uh, just to fill in that, that first thing because we had to do a minus eight. Then we're going to say the first entry, which is free. We're going to say, hey, that's actually system. Then we're going to say the next one is puts and F read and then cancel the rest. I had to do that because it does some null byte terminator and it would screw up one of them. So I think I found that these two were okay to clobber. But if I clobbered puts, uh, the, the process would call puts later and it got mad. Um, but yeah, at that point, then we're going to remove horse 15. When we do remove, it's going to call free. But free no longer points to free and now points to system. And we should just get shell. So let's remove all the interactives and GDBs. GDB. No more GDBs. Um, cool. And so if we run this, hopefully we get shell. Uh, it does take a second. There's a sleep function in there for the horse races. And so we have to wait for all the sleep. We could have commented out the sleep, but I didn't. Uh, cool. At this point, we should have shell, and we do. Oops. Who am I? I am root. So uh, like I said, very fun challenge. You know, it does a lot of good heap exploitation techniques. Um, but yeah, fun challenge. Uh, this challenge was actually recommended by uh, a longtime viewer of uh, Sloppy Joe Pirates. Um, so thank you for the recommendation. Uh, if anyone else has a challenge they'd like to see, just let me know. If as long as it's a, a fun challenge, I'm happy to take a look and make a video. So anyways, cheers. See you, everyone.